This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance broadcast. The following was reported in a San Francisco newspaper that recently the Bayshore Freeway was transformed into a flat tire alley when a case of roofing nails bounced off a southbound truck. The case burst when it smashed to the pavement with predictable results. Within seconds, 5,000 nails were scattered over the four heavily traveled freeway lanes and beginning just a few seconds later, motorists' tires began to go flat. A highway patrolman said flats on more than 40 autos and trucks were reported. A little one-ounce nail can stop a huge two-ton truck, just as certainly as little doubts, fears, and anxieties can inhibit and impede the mighty joys and satisfactions and meanings human life was intended to have. Jesus of Nazareth once said, have faith as a grain of mustard seed. What he was saying was that faith, hope, and idealism may have small beginnings in a human being's life, but given cultivation, they will grow and flourish. Once I had a conversation with a woman who held the conviction that life simply didn't have any meaning. She said, there isn't a God, there are no absolutes. The only meaning life can possibly have is just what a person imagines or makes up for himself. I said, not only do I believe there are meanings and values to life, we don't just hallucinate them, they're real. I said, gravity would still exist if there were no human beings around to measure it. So would beauty and other values. She said, no, these things are only values because you say or think that they are. I replied, the scientific definition of a fact is something which can be observed by others as well as the original observing scientists. Gravity is a fact because scientists all over the world can observe and can test it. But people all over the world similarly recognize beauty and value love and goodness. These things, too, must therefore be real. They are as real as the findings of science in their own spiritual fashion. Life does have meaning. God thus created it to be. But the finding of that meaning involves going beyond shallow egocentricity, skepticism and doubt, into a world of personal spiritual discovery. The famous language expert, Professor Stuart Flexner, found that the most common word spoken in the United States is the word I. More often than referring to anything or anybody else, human beings talk about themselves. Yet the great spiritual teachers of human history have reiterated the necessity of the individual getting outside of himself, beyond himself, becoming increasingly interested in the lives and well-being of others. The two great commandments of Jesus were the love of God and the love of others, with the self listed as third priority. According to a Harris poll, 81% of the people in the United States of America said health was the most important thing in life. Second, they listed peace of mind and having high standards of living. But in the final analysis, medical science has found that even good health physically depends upon peace of mind, on the psychology, the psychosomatic effect of negative or pessimistic thinking is measurable on one's physical medical charts. An interior equipoise of spirit derived from knowing who and what you are, where you came from and where you're going, and why you're here will make a difference in every aspect of life. You can only find these things in the finding and knowing of God. In this, there is joy of living. Your life can be filled to the very brim with meaning and with purpose and with promise. You can arise each morning to greet the alarm clock and the morning sun shining through the curtains or the fog rolling in through the window if you happen to live in San Francisco, with a sense of zest and purpose and real challenge as a child of God rather than cringing and shrinking from them. Jesus indicated that people are not to be merely colorless ascetics, but should have a sense of spiritual zest about life. It was said of one pious old preacher, nobody on earth could dive deeper into the truth, stay under longer, or come up drier. When religion thus becomes withered and dry, it needs a new infusion of experiential faith, of worship and praise, and the downright joy of the simple truth of the love and the mercy and the goodness of God. As it is written in the scriptures, taste and see that God is good. You can experience this, not just theorize about it. It's one thing to imagine 
the taste of a banana. It's another thing to eat a banana and know what the taste tastes like. You can experience firsthand and personally what it is to be loved by God, to recognize, to accept the love which envelops and surrounds you and is within you this very moment. If only you will have the faith to believe it. It'll change your life. One day I was walking down the street and I saw a man who was unquestionably unhappy, long face. Barber would have charged him twice to shave it. I got the feeling if he'd walked the street from one end to the other, it would have been raining by the time he got halfway. Your personal, individual philosophy of life is going to make a tangible, real difference in the moods, the attitudes, and the way the other people around you feel. You can literally take part in the changing of the world by being first yourself a transformed individual, by beginning to live in vigorous faith in love and joy and goodness. As the son or daughter of God, you were born to be, and in truth you are. I've noticed that usually when a person says things are looking up or things are looking down, what that person really means is that he or she is looking up or he or she is looking down. Philosophically, you personalize reality. You impute your own feelings onto life. When a person is feeling bad, he says the world is bad. When he or she is feeling good, decides the world is good. The ultimate choice is simply faith or despair. I have met people who could look up at the sky, I think, after a shower and criticize the color scheme of a rainbow. You could say, I don't think that purple quite matches the cloud over there. Don't you wish the yellow and the green were reversed or it doesn't go with the sky? Yet God has given to every person the power to appreciate the beauty and the truth and the goodness of life, but the decision to cultivate these spiritual sensitivities is your choice to make, and it makes all of life an adventure and exciting. There was an ambitious young author who once took a manuscript to George Bernard Shaw for criticism. Shaw dozed, and then he fell asleep, and the boy was reading the manuscript to George Bernard Shaw. Finally, this young man remonstrated, saying that he'd come for Shaw's comments. My dear boy, Shaw said, awakening from his doze, sleep is a comment. And it is furthermore one of the most frequently expressed commentaries regarding religion, sometimes with good reason. Man has been described as a creature of dissatisfaction. Once, the early 19th century statesman John Randolph was at dinner in a tavern when he pointed to his cup and his saucer and he said to the waiter, take this away, change it. What is it you want, Mr. Randolph, said the waiter. Randolph replied, if that stuff is tea, bring me coffee. If it's coffee, bring me tea. There is also within human beings a sort of divine discontent, a longing for inward transformation, a persistent religious restlessness which craves ultimately for God and which is bored or dissatisfied with anything less. Whomever you may be, you are a son or daughter of the divine, and by faith you can realize and actualize that ennobling truth. The other day I went down to the post office. I was picking up the mail, and inside the box there was a notice. I was supposed to get a package at one of the windows. It was a parcel too large for the box. That package was mine already. It had my name on it. It was being held just for me. There was no postage due on it. Didn't cost me a cent. It was mine already, but I still had to go through the process of claiming it, to receive it. And in precisely the same sense, God loves you already. God has strength and joy and peace and a will for your life and goodness for your life already. But you have to claim these things. That's what faith is. By living faith, you accept, you appropriate to yourself that which God has already freely given from his love, his goodness, from his inexhaustible being to you. And you then begin to live as you were born and created and intended to live. And this is an exciting enterprise. Human beings are born adventurers. In 1492, Columbus sailed. In 1497, Vasco da Gama navigated around Africa to India. Pedro Cabral explored South America in 1500. In the 1520s, Magellan sailed around the world. Historically, humankind has loved to explore the world in which it exists, but few have deeply explored the world which exists within 
humankind. There is an inner kingdom, a royal realm within each human being because the very divine spirit of the universal God has been bestowed upon humanity. And there is joy and solace in that. Douglas MacArthur once wrote, You are as young as your faith, as old as your doubt, as young as your confidence, as old as your fear, as young as your hope, as old as your despair. In the central place of every heart, there is a recording chamber. So long as it receives messages of beauty, hope, cheer, and courage, so long are we young. When the wires are all down and your heart is covered with the snows of pessimism and the ice of cynicism, then... And then only are you grown old. And the brave, blind, dauntless Helen Keller once wrote, Join the great company of those who make the barren places of life fruitful with kindness. Carry a vision of heaven in your hearts, and you shall make your home, your college, the world correspond to that vision. Your success and happiness lie within you. External conditions are the accidents of life, its outer trappings. The great enduring realities are love and service. Joy is the holy fire that keeps our purposes warm and our intelligence aglow. Resolve to keep happy, and your joy and you shall form an invincible host against difficulty. Authentic progress of whatever sort is invariably thrilling. Consider the woman who went into the butcher shop, asked the man behind the counter to show her a 20-pound cut of pork. He did so. And then he said, shall I wrap it up for you? She said, no, I've been on a diet. I lost 20 pounds. I wanted to see how much that is. To make progress in your existence, whether physically, mentally, psychologically, or spiritually, is exciting. But the most exhilarating progress of which human beings are capable is spiritual. Living as the son or daughter of God, in truth, you really are. And the discovery of that joy awaits you this very moment, if only you will dare to believe it. And then write to us, will you? We really want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, any and all of this literature, yours free, without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. For those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell out mailing address, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.